What are some financial things I should consider when I'm planning to get pregnant? Ooh, good question. Um, well, number one, are you going to take time off? Is it covered? You know, hopefully you get some maternity benefits uh, through your job. If you don't have that, how will you... Um, cover that time in which you decide to take off, whether it's three to six to a year <laughs> long. Um, also, I would say if you're getting pregnant, then you're going to also have additional expenses, you know, right. hospital stays, you know, review your health insurance benefits, see what they cover, um, you know, kind of do your best to plan what the baby will bring in terms of extra living expenses mm -hmm. every month. You know, I always like to tell clients the baby will bring their own pizza, meaning they'll come with their own money. <laughs> um, so don't stress out so much because I think a lot of parents worry about, oh my God, how am I going to afford the baby? But magically everybody makes it work. It's just kind of part right. of life. So don't get extra anxious or worry about that, but do planning and figure out, okay, what are those additional expenses? You know, especially if the mom or dad goes back to work, who's going to take care of the baby? You know, Ooh. like, are there going to be nanny costs or, you know, those sorts, sorts of things. So I think it's a, it's an exciting time, but like anything, do your best, review what you have, what you can plan and prepare for, and then roll with it because a lot in, of, financial planning is to just course correcting as you go, as you know, you know, you can yeah. put a plan, but it's never going to, be 100% accurate all the time because right. life is not that way. Now, so if this is something where like, obviously if you're planning to get pregnant in like the next six months, that's a much shorter time window. But if let's say it's something that you know you want in the next few years, is that a good time for like a high yield savings account just for, you know, pre-baby planning? I, I definitely would say that. The reality is a lot of people... I mean, if you're in a situation where you can put extra money away just mm -hmm. for pre-baby planning and a baby, then do it. But also look at all your other goals. I would start there too. Like look at your budget. Are you even on top of your spending now? Um, do you have a cash cushion now, you know, just for normal life cash cushion? Do you right. have... Maybe if you're saving for a home, do you have that funded? Are you on track for retirement? And then, you know, if you analyze all those different aspects of your financial situation now and you still have the ability to save a cushion for a baby, then yes, of course, go for it. But I think in big cities like LA or New York, it's a little tricky. You know, it's always how do we stretch the dollars that we have for all these various goals that we're working on? Yeah. And what's the priority? And this is, I don't actually know if this is on the question list, but kind of related to that, one of the questions that we get constantly, um, and an, a, a, always it's going to be another, it depends, but yeah. is a general kind of rule and, and strategy. <clears throat> what are the kinds of life events for which you would use a high yield savings account? What are the kinds of life events that you would use a CD or something like that time deposit, whatever. And what are the ones where you would be okay with using the market? to, to maximize your, your savings? I think it's a great question. So I tell clients all the time, anything five years or less really should not be invested in yeah. anything, whether it's real estate or the stock market, because you just don't know. And cyclically, the economy has a five-year bear, um, bull market run. So mm -hmm. like typically every five to seven years, there's like some sort of dip. So if you are saving, for example, for a home down payment and you put that in the stock market because you want higher return. And then two years from now, when you're ready to buy the home, you're like, where's my down payment? Right. And it's down 10, 20% because the markets are having a down year. You're going to be pissed. <laughs> like right, You're not yeah. going to be happy. But a lot of people go in, like literally, this is a question we get asked all the time. How do I get more return on my money while I'm saving for a home or a property in the next few years? And I'm like, you have to keep it in cash. Yeah. Like you have to sacrifice unless you're just super risky and you're like want to roll the dice or, or have a really, really flexible window of when you want to buy. Exactly. If you're not so attached. And that actually was a conversation I had yesterday with a client. She's like, well, if that, if that was the case, I would actually be willing to wait it out then. Yeah. I said, okay, great. So now you're very clear about your 
decision-making process. Yeah, yeah. I think I've, I've had that conversation a few times with my husband because we, we definitely would like to buy property. I don't know if we'll be buying our principal residence, but uh, one of the reasons why we're not necessarily interested in buying our principal residence, well, first of all, because we live in Manhattan and no thanks, but uh, <laughs> more importantly, because if you're not buying your principal residence, that gives you a lot more freedom to the timeline of yep. when you're buying. And we would prefer to use the market to help with that particular savings goal, but then we know that we really have to time it based on when the market is going to be great and take that money out at that point, mm -hmm. rather than say like, we've found the home of our dreams and it's a bear market and we're screwed basically. Yeah. Um, so that's something to consider because I'm definitely the kind of person who will really fall in love with a property and be like, oh my gosh, I have to have this one. But if your money is tied up that way and it's not the right time to take it out, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it's, that's a big thing to consider because again, that could potentially represent an enormous amount, uh, of, of increased returns on that same, you know, principal investment. But especially when it comes to buying a home, you may not find the homes that you want on the market at the time <laughs> when your money's ready to, to take out. Mm -hmm. Although, and also one thing to consider is that a lot of times the homes are going to be obviously very, the prices of these homes are going to be very tied to the health of the market. So yeah. if it's not a great time for your money that's invested, that's also probably the time when the homes are at their best price to buy. So yeah, it's kind of a that, lot to consider. Yeah, it is a lot to consider. And I, that's why I always tell people, just understand your own risk appetite yes. because what you're going to do or willing to do is different than what I am. Right. And we can do that all day long. And so it's not a matter of, is this the right way or the best investment? It's right. like, well, what is it that you want and what are you willing to do or not do in order to have it? 